Wow, they started me all the way back here? That's dog shit. That's total dog shit. Holy shit, what is wrong with the checkpointing and the auto saves in this? I really like this game, but that's complete crap. Like, how do you not just... How do you not just have a checkpoint or an autosave after every puzzle room? Come on. There's no reason for that shit. Alright, we are back where we left off in the last episode. Once again, upset with the checkpointing in this game. Holy shit. I mean, it's it could be way worse. It could have me restart the entire level, but man. That's upsettingly bad. Not the kind of thing I really want to deal with after scorching the earth with like 13 different customer service reps for the past four hours. Wow, man. All right, so with that switch hit, that's going to raise a secret little platform up over here that contained a secret. My people come from the wet belt of the Savage Rock. Under the banner, I lead my men into neighboring villages to find slaves for our allegiance. I used to hunt Mazatl. Now I hunt men. I have seen the weapons of the Tepetal Nation. They need not spears or bow. They can burn villages from great distances. Make men disappear in a terrible flash. Alright. Now we are going to go over to the ball. And... Come on. Come on. Get out of there, ball. I'm trying to unplug this little pool of water here, but the ball did not want to cooperate. I just had to pull it. And now that path is open to us, and for a second I was worried the ball wasn't going to get through. Hey, more monkeys. You know the rule. A monkey dies every episode or else. <laughs> or else what? I wonder to myself aloud. Oh, this pu I know what this puzzle is. This is really cool, even though it's not that challenging a puzzle. Uh, it's just a big circular room wi with sliding platforms that either block your path or the ball's path beneath you. And you have to keep maneuvering the sliding pathway. Which is a pretty cool idea. It's a little bit repetitive. But it's still like the execution of it's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat way to do one of these types of puzzles. Uh, you might also notice it's a little hard because the glow of the switch blends in with the glow of the lava beneath you. There is a ball switch uh, directly below, on the ball's side, the player switch in the same position. And so you're using both the player switch above and the ball switch below to manipulate these sliding walls that come up and down. And so at one point... At at any given time, either you can move forward or the ball can move forward. So the trick to the puzzle is to just make sure the ball is just far enough away from the wall that when it goes down and separates the ball from you, you can pass over to the other side. Very convoluted way of explaining a simple puzzle. Oh, fuck this room. This room's kind of annoying. You have to manage this little mummy, push him out of the way, while you manipulate the magnets, and that can get tedious. So just keep knocking Ric Flair on his ass. So the goal is to pass the ball off between all of the magnets while not dying to the stupid mummy that they put here just to annoy you. And you want to get it to the other side of the room by passing it off in this manner. man -na 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 -na. If you fully charge up the left click on your gun before you hit the mummy, before you release it I mean, uh, it'll knock the mummy on his ass, otherwise you'll just have to keep tapping it to push him away. And what the hell is going on with the switches? It's like they're... Okay, it stopped. It's like they were stuck. Rotating out of control. I don't remember, but I think if the mummy walks over those switches, he can rotate the magnets too. Uh, which just makes this a giant pain in my ass. It's, again, it's not a very complicated puzzle. Um, each switch corresponds to the magnet on that switch's side, so it's just getting it to rotate 90 degrees enough time to pass it off to the adjacent switch. 
it's just diverting your attention to look up at the magnet and then multitasking and looking back down at the mummy to push the persistent, tenacious little fucker away. Not getting flustered at all. With the damn mummy. The damn mummy. Um, it's annoying. And I've spent way too much time on this room already. Way more than I would normally like to. Um, uh, maybe what I said earlier about the mummies triggering the switches is dead wrong, but otherwise I don't know how the switches got stuck and started spinning out of control. Let's take vengeance on the mummy real quick. Yeah, he was gonna follow us up here anyway. Actually, I think there's a pitfall coming up, so... Uh, maybe he would have fallen to his death. This game is gonna make me hold one hell of a vendetta against mummies. You know, I'm trying to probe my brain and come up with other games where m mummies were heavily featured as enemies, and I'm just not coming up with anything. The only thing I'm coming up with isn't even a game, it's Mummies Alive. You would think these would fall like dominoes, but no. Uh, the second and third ones do. Yeah. Was there ever a Mummies Alive game? That seems like the kind of show built around the type of merchandising that would make for one hell of a Super Nintendo game. I'll have to look that up now. It's probably like a shitty Maximum Carnage caliber game, but still. I would like to know if that exists. Uh, this is a little rotating room puzzle. You're rotating this interior section so you can access the outer sections. I don't know how many times you have to rotate this, and we all know my spatial memory is kind of shitty, so hopefully I don't spend forever on this puzzle. Alright, so I'm trying to get down here. There we go. And I'll knock these two pillar out, pillars out. That way the ball can slide into the switch if it's doing its job properly. Ball, if you don't do your job, I'm gonna fire you. Oh, I didn't knock the pillars down correctly. Never mind, I'll just go over here and fire myself. I'm not doing my job properly. It's okay, ball, you get a promotion. You are now head of customer service for Amazon. To be fair, Ball would probably make a better customer service manager than some of the people I was talking to today. Hmm. Fun, fun, fun. Cool, that is my destination, the big orange glowy bit in the background. I made it through the room without massive screw-ups due to spatial, spatial memory related reasons. Hooray! And we're rewarded with mummies. Hmm. Getting tired of dealing with you guys. You're either going at me one on one, mano a mano, when I'm trying to do puzzles when I don't have my ball, or you're just being chumps when I do. Big undead mooks. Oh, hey, more mummies to be easily crushed by the ball. I don't know why. I really don't know what the point of the mummies being in the game is. It really, if you think about it, does not make any sense. It's like they weren't confident enough in the in the puzzle-solving aspect of the game alone, so they think, uh, people might get bored if they're just solving puzzles. Let's put some really, really terrible combat in it against some underwhelming mummy enemies. And, yeah, didn't work out for the best. It's like they didn't have confidence in their audience to maintain attention on the puzzle aspect of the game without mundane combat. Which is a shame because the puzzles are really good. What the game does, it does really well. The Twin Tiakali is complete. I have heard the stories of the Tepetal Nation reaching beyond the farthest glade. Of their machines, their wealth, and their power. I have seen chariots led by their own navigation. I have seen the very ground move by command of a switch. They can wield magic to make structures move without need of rowing hands. Is that supposed to be rowing hands or row? Rowing hands. I've never heard the phrase row used like that. 
I need to wait for this to pass by on the other side so I can get to that switch. Timing? Ah. Now, I don't quite remember where this all le is leading to, but I'm sure we'll figure out in due time. I'm sure it will all make sense in the course of due time. Oh, a checkpoint. What a rare sight indeed. So happy to see the checkpoint logo pop up in case I might ex I might want to do something aside from play the ball for a bit. Oh man. Oh, I'm bitter about the shitty checkpointing. Wait a minute. Okay. I can lead it around from there. The first time I played this, it took me a really long time to figure out that this is the specific spot where they wanted me to leave the ball for a little bit uh, for this room. Trying to line it up in just the right spot so you can see the bluish glow in the distance. That's what we're heading towards. It'll make sense in a moment. And now we come to a bunch of first-person platforming, which hopefully I does not get me killed. This first-person platforming, surprisingly, is not too bad, even though it looks perilous as all hell. Because you jump, if you just if you hold it down, you jump just far enough. Your maximum your maximum jump distance is just enough such that uh, that platforming is not too bad. What we did just now back there with the switch was we hit that player switch, which triggered a column to extend from the ceiling. On the bottom of the column was a ball switch, which probably not that easy to see and when that switch from the sky whacked into the ball and it opened up the exit for us so now that we've retrieved the ball we can do a uh, bunch more first person platforming and head towards the exit uh, this is the exit door right here we just opened up with that ceiling column ball switch Let's go see if General Ram wants to play with us. General Ram, I'm having a hard time reading your body language. I always love these big drops. This totally reminds me of the drop from Dear Esther, actually. It's the exact same pitfall. Actually, another drop this somehow reminds me of is um the Wrath of the Lich King dungeon, uh the Ajdol Narub dungeon. There's a drop just like it. Same lighting, same kind of atmosphere. Anyway, that is going to do it for now everyone. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.